Let's take a look at the ANET A8. This printer was built during an almost eight hour live stream. I've been putting it through its paces this week and I've come up with some conclusions. Let's get the obvious stuff out of the way first. The A8 is a Cartesian style printer with a 220 by 220 by 240 millimeter build volume, an MK8 style extruder, and a three millimeter aluminum heated bed. This is an all acrylic kit. This printer is probably one of the most popular low cost machines out there. It can be had for around $165 US direct from China, and that's usually with free shipping. The printer is pretty easy to assemble. It took about five hours to get it set up and printing. Anet has a video for you to follow for the build, but they also have a PDF on the SD card. I went with the PDF because it's kind of hard to follow a video during the live stream. I have to say the video and the manual could use some updating. Also, the manual could use a little more information about what screw goes where. For instance, the kit that I got didn't have enough holes in the back of the Y carriage. I'm not sure if this was a mistake or a cost saving measure, but the kit did go together without them. Now for the pros column. I have to say the printer did pretty well right out of the box after I used some of my own parts to get it up and running, but more on that in a minute. It printed a very nice Benchy with only minor defects in just two attempts. It comes with a part cooling fan, the bed heats pretty quickly from 23C to 100C in about 15 minutes. They use a piece of sheet metal to mount the heated bed on that's way better than acrylic. They use some fairly nice aluminum bearing holders for the smooth rods that make it feel more sturdy. And they do use lead screws for the Z axis instead of threaded rods. And get this, they're straight. I also like the fact that they found a spot to mount the power supply. Now for the cons. First off, the heater cartridge was completely dead when I built it. I had to swap in one of my own to even continue the build. That is a straight up fail. Let's stop there just for one second. Myself, I'm willing to accept this because I'm a 3D printing type person. I know that they're not perfect and you do get what you pay for. If I was a younger person maybe and I spent countless hours trying to get this machine to work and troubleshooting what the issue was, I would be more than frustrated. I'd probably be left with a pile of garbage that I would lose interest in and never get it functioning properly. I use the term usual cheap 3D printer pitfalls. I can take a bad fan, loud bearings, crooked rods, poor firmware settings, a bad heated bed, a non-functioning LCD, or even the occasional electrical plug meltdown. But when an integral part fails, like a heater, a motor, or a mainboard, this is not acceptable, and it keeps the printer from printing. Now off the soapbox. The kit is all acrylic, which is sturdy enough if you're careful. I would like to see them switch to cap head screws, but that's not a huge issue. One thing that did happen after the build is the grub screw that holds the heater in was apparently stripped, and it came out during a print after the block got good and hot. Then it continued to heat on top of my build surface, and then continued to heat on top of my table, leaving a nice burn mark. I'm glad I didn't leave it overnight. This could have been a serious issue. So I swapped out the heater block with a little better style and continued on. The bed is covered in masking tape. You probably want to get rid of that and go to something else. I suggest maybe starting with some glue stick. The bed is warped a little bit. You can print on it, but a nice flat piece of glass would make life easier. The printer has the same shiny belts that I don't care for that are either clamped with a piece of acrylic or attached with some zip ties. After many prints, the unusual barrel size started to bind and caused the filament to jam. You can see the missing lines on the top of this model. So I swapped the barrel out with a longer one. I also added a second nut on top of the heat block to keep it from leaking. Same firmware as the other ANET printers. It's proprietary and you can't make changes if you need to. I'll be looking into different solutions for this soon. The LCD is the same hard to move around, take too many clicks to get anywhere type. The controller board is the same red ANET board as the others, a Ramps Mega Combo type. It has built-in motor driver chips that can't be adjusted. Sorry for the mess. The printer does have the same cheap heat bed plug that I see on their other printers that will more than likely fail at some point. Consider removing the plug and soldering the wires direct to avoid issues. Again, they did mount the power supply, which is great. I would like to see them go one step further and throw in a power switch. This can be real handy when things go wrong. ANET does not provide support directly for these printers. You can contact the seller you got it from, but I found it's mostly you get what you get. Some advice on these printers. With an acrylic printer this large, you're not gonna wanna move it around much. Moving it can cause the bed to become unlevel easily. I suggest mounting it on a table or some wood of some kind. 
you can see how much difference even lifting one foot can make in the bed level. Also, printing large objects is going to be challenging on this printer, given the inconsistency of the heated bed. I was able to print this whole, but I had to use tape and spend about 20 minutes getting the bed level just right. It did turn out fairly well. I also did manage to print this large rocket. It could be even better with a little bit of filament tuning. On my first attempt of the rocket, the model did curl, and this is PLA, which is very unusual. It just shows the inconsistencies of the heat bed that you're going to receive. I have to say I'm pretty surprised by this printer kit. I went in thinking the worst, and I came out with really only one failed part and a pretty good looking 3D print. For $165 US, you pretty much can't go wrong here. If you're willing not to move it around much and replace a few sub $5 parts here and there, you're good to go. This is a great entry into 3D printing and can be modded to make it even better. I have not been in contact with ANET or GearBest on this review or this printer. I have purchased this printer off the GearBest website with my own funds and all opinions expressed are my own. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribing to my channel. If not, please leave your thoughts below and as always, thanks for watching.